What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. Today we're going over the Wakira iBow. This drone was introduced to the public sometime mid-2016. I think the first time I heard about this was in August of last year, so it's definitely not anything new. A few weeks ago an opportunity did present itself and well, <laughs> I couldn't say no to the opportunity to review this drone as I've really been wanting to get into GPS and photography drones. In fact, I'll probably be building my own sometime in the near future so I hope you guys will keep an eye out for that. The iBow is a ready to fly 280mm mini drone that comes with dual GPS, that's GPS and GLONASS, which allows you to connect to more satellites for more accurate positioning. This 4K and GPS equipped iBow gives you access to some really cool features including automated waypoint, circle mode, GPS hold and of course the real draw in factor that is augmented reality. There are a number of other features as well, and I'll get into all of them a little bit later on. As with all Wakira products, they arrive very nicely packaged. Everything is held securely in place. Mostly everything is individually packaged. It really gives off a premium quality feel. Originally, the price point of the iBow was around $399, at which it didn't see too much success. It's actually had a few issues right from the get-go, most of which are said to have been software related. The price has dropped significantly since launch. You can now find these drones hanging around the upper 200s. That's around $270 to $300. This review will be going over all the main points of this drone and we'll see if any of the issues have been ironed out or if they still pose a problem. Let's open her up and see what's all included. Let's start out with the transmitter, which is a Devil F8E. It's a full size radio which actually has a good bit of weight to it. That's around 875 grams if you're wondering. I'm just going to quickly go over some of the basics on this radio as I feel the instructions already do a good job laying it out. First of all, it states in the specs that this radio is good for up to 1.5 kilometers, which is more than enough as the video reception is going to cut out way before you get anywhere near 1.5 kilometers. It's got a built-in 2S 3000 milliamp battery, which is probably one of the reasons why it's as heavy as it is. It has a good battery life. I've actually only charged it once since I started using it. In place of switches, this radio uses buttons. Pretty much all buttons aside from the one four position switch, which controls the flight mode. Well, actually there's also the joystick that controls the gimbal. You don't get a screen on this radio which is kind of a bummer. It would have been nice to be able to see notifications on a screen. Instead all of your readouts are shown in the little sectioned off area on the bottom of the radio. Some of the buttons here have no use at least for the iBow. I guess there was plans for an add-on gimbal. The only thing I was able to find regarding the gimbal was this picture. So that gets rid of the two buttons on the top right corner along with the joystick. Everything else is self-explanatory. 
H is for the home button. Press and hold this button and it brings your drone back home. You got video and picture, which will, will record video and picture. You have to have a micro SD card inserted into the drone to be able to record. And of course the four position switch, which allows you to select different flight modes. It actually took me a little while before I found out that I had to select a flight mode and then press the center button to switch modes. And last of all, the pre-installed attachment allows you to securely hold any size phone or tablet. If you're going to use a phone, just make sure you pull out this tab. And this is my favorite part. It's just so smooth. And the star of the show, the iBow, which really does look great. The styling of really all Walkhero products are top notch. I've always been a fan of how they design their drones. One of my first hobby grade drones was actually a Walkhero Runner 250. Just like the iBow, they both look great. It almost seems as if they put too much time into their design and not so much on other parts like the software. The iBell has a two-tone paint job where the main body of the drone has a gloss white surface, just like on the radio. These holes you see in the arms here, as well as on the side plates, aren't just for styling. It's placed there as ventilation for the hardware. This is where the ESC sits. Going from the specs, the iBell looks like a great feature-rich drone. It's 4K and dual GPS equipped, giving you access to four different flight modes plus augmented reality. All right, let's start from the front and just make our way around. The iBell has a pretty good camera. It's one of the cheapest drones with a 4K camera. You can record 4K video at 25 frames per second and 30 frames per second at 2.7K. This is the video resolution. The specs state that you can run the iBow at 1080 as well as 720, but I could not for the life of me find out how. The only options that were available were 4K and 2.7K. I wanted to try a lower resolution to see if there was some type of digital stabilization, kind of like what the Parrot drone does. The videos are recorded in either 4K as MP4 or 2.7K as MOV. Here are some of the specs for the photos. FPV is done through a 5.8 GHz 200 mW transmitter, so it should be getting good range, or at least you would think so. The specs say it's good for up to 800 meters, but mine's acting a little funky. The furthest I was able to fly away was 200 meters before I would start losing reception. In addition, there are random dropouts. Sometimes it would drop out at 50 feet, Sometimes at 10 feet, it would literally happen randomly. So it kind of leaves you feeling apprehensive about flying around, especially since you can literally lose connection at any moment. All right, so on the bottom of the drone, we have a dummy sonar sensor. Walker, you tricky, tricky. Also, there's an empty spot where the gimbal could have been attached to. I think at one point there was plans for add-on components, but because the eyebrow was such a failure, Certain things got canned, or Walkeri just never went through with it, which kind of sucks because I really think the eyeball had potential. All issues aside, it's a really good looking drone. And here we have the battery. It slides right in so it's nice and convenient. There's no wires or connectors that you have to deal with, so that's a plus. To power on the quad, just flick the switch. You got two sets of LEDs, blue in the front and red in the back. The battery is a 2 cell that's 7.6 volts, which is a little higher than your standard LiPos, and it's a 5200 milliamp hour, which is crazy because it doesn't look like one. I mean, this is incredibly small for a battery of this size, and on a full charge, you can expect flight times of 19 to 21 minutes. So there's another plus. I'm not sure what size motors these are. It doesn't state anywhere the specs. Even on their website, it's not listed. If I had a guess, I would say these are 2205s and the props, I measured them and they're right about 7 inches. There's a lot that can be improved on this drone. One of those things is a retractable landing gear. Or maybe retractable is not the right word. It would have been cool if the landing gear was foldable. It would have saved so much room, making transport so much easier. Alright, enough of that. Let's head to the park and see how this thing flies. 
So yeah, the iBell is pretty frustrating. I'm not sure if it's the software or the iBell's hardware, but during one flight session, I would be losing connection at least a dozen times. And nine times out of 10, when I lose connection, I would have to restart the application. That's pretty much what I was doing here, getting frustrated. Let's fast forward to when I finally get it up in the air. Launching the quad with the press of a button. The eyeball hovers to a predefined height and remains there. I haven't really messed with it yet, but there are a bunch of settings that you can change, like how high you want the drone to fly before returning home. I'm in GPS hold right now, and I think I have about 15 satellites, and it's pretty stable. Another thing I would have liked here is for the battery to have some type of sensor showing whether or not you have a full charge. The night before, I guess I didn't charge to full capacity, and this is what happens. At least it's good to know that the eyeball warns you of low voltage, and it will actually start descending by itself in addition to the blaring beeps. It's actually pretty quiet. I'm more used to flying race drones, which is a good bit louder. This is manual mode. So, not the fastest, and this is with me going full pitch forward. Full pitch. Definitely not the fastest. This is motion. I think this is sport mode. You can expect faster speeds, especially over GPS. Be aware of your elevation when hitting full pitch forward. I noticed the quad would descend and there were times where I thought the quad was going to hit the ground. That's full pitch, I mean full roll. Here's full pitch. Here's GPS. Pretty much feels like manual mode. When it comes to speed, it's the same. Just a nice brisk pace. Not fast, but I wouldn't consider it slow either. If you've never flown a drone before, this is a good mode to start in. With uh, the GPS turned on, you can focus on learning what each stick movement will cause the drone to do. I think the hardest thing for me to learn was the orientation. I flew fine so long as I was flying away, but flying towards me, that was very difficult to get used to. And you really don't have to worry about crashing because it's, it's actually hard to crash when the GPS is turned on. And let's try a circle. Pushing the stick left or right will move it towards that direction. And holding it will increase the speed. Pushing down or up will increase or decrease the circle respectively. And then it goes around in a circle by itself. Let's try going the other way. If you push up, up on the right stick, up on the right stick makes the circle smaller. Pushing down increases the diameter. All right. Let's try the augmented reality.
apps just have so many bugs. Here, there's no video. All right, let's try it again. And another error. Okay, so a few tries later, it finally works, at least for a moment. Okay, so a few tries later, it finally works, at least for a moment. And that was with me closing the application and turning off the drone and turning off the radio. After a few tries, I was finally able to get it working, but it was only for like 20 seconds. And what do you know, it freezes up again. So yeah, I pretty much gave up on the augmented reality at that point. I tried getting it to work like a crazy person. It would just keep crashing. So this app didn't drive me as crazy as the Walk Here Go app. I was actually able to get it working for a reasonable amount of time, at least to the point where I was able to fly to 200 meters. But this was definitely not always the case. It would also randomly drop connection mid-flight, sometimes far away and sometimes as little as just 10 feet away. I actually like the layout of the app. There's plenty of useful information like transmitter connectivity, remaining battery life, distance from home, height, speed, and more. You also have the option of recording videos or taking pictures with the app or you can use your transmitter. Same thing with return to home and land. You can use either the app or the radio. All right, let's check out some sample clips recorded with the iBowls 4K camera. I recorded clips in both 4K and 2.7K, and you can definitely tell the higher quality of the 4K video, since, but since I'm gonna be rendering the video at 1080p, so I'm not sure you're gonna be able to tell the difference. Regardless, I'll put the two up side by side and we'll see how it looks after it's rendered. I know it's not paired up, but if it shows right, you should be able to see the higher detail uh, on the 4K. The camera quality is good, but because it doesn't have a gimbal, it's not really something anyone would want to use to record videos with. Even the slightest amount of wind will cause horrendous shaking, probably even make some nauseous. You know, I just find it so unfortunate. The eyeball could have been so much better. It should have been so much better. But now it's just too late. Even if updates come out to fix it, with a drone game moving as fast as it is, the eyeball is yesterday's news. Well, more like last year's news. So I'm going to end it with this. Wakara comes out with some of the best designs when it comes to drones. I really do love the way the eyeball looks. But honestly, the good stops there. To date, I've tested three different Wakara products. Two of three were duds. And I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to have to add the eyeball to that list. The fact is, it's plagued with issues. I was hoping they would have worked out some of the kinks. But disappointingly, there are still software issues, connectivity issues, mediocre GPS locationing, lack of image stabilization. The fact is, the iBell is half complete. Even at discounted pricing, the iBell is not worth your money. You're better off saving up a little and getting a Hubson X4, the Xiaomi Mi Drone, or better yet, a Phantom 3. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching. See ya.